Welcome to Ross Camp with Move It. This is week four of the series, the last part one. And today we have two objectives. The first one is to make a few clarifications on last week's class. Um, it turns out I was using a different package from what we've been doing. We've been using from week one and two. So I went back to create a similar package and then I'm going to show you how to get your robot up and running. I mean, how to map the controllers to move it so that move it can plan and then move it can make plans and then it will be reflected in the original, the hardware robot or the simulated one that you have. So what we've been doing so far, everything is still the same. You have the controllers.yaml file and you also make changes in the move it um, controller manager launch file. You just keep it the same as we did last week. Remember. You have to keep your package i mean soya underscore movie underscore config this is the second time i'm doing it so i have underscore two over here but you don't necessarily have to add it it just has to reflect the name of your package so so far everything is the same from last week's class the controller is the yaml file showing the name for the controller the various joints and then the controller manager launch file you do this you don't have to create a new launch file in fact, what we're going to do is we'll just edit the demo.launch to do this for us. You don't have to create a new launch file. So the only different thing you're going to do when you open the demo.launch is to change line 32 over here, the sources list parameter. So set this to point to the joint states topic. I mean, whatever, whatever the name for that topic for your robot is, just said this. In this case, we have the robot slash joint states because we're using the robot namespace. So set this over here. And then the only other configuration you're going to change here is the fake execution. I'm going to set this to false. Yes, remember to do control S to save and then you're done. That's all you have to do for the demo.launch to get it up and running. Okay, so I'm going to um, start my robot so that just for clarity's sake to show that this configuration I just changed, these few parameters I just changed actually works. Remember to first source the simulation workspace and then I'm going to do enable the actuators. Yes, this is also something I didn't do last week but then even though it worked out all right but it's not the right way to go about when you're using the soya robot you first have to enable the robot so it's a script inside the intera underscore interface package and then just give it the um, argument dash e to enable the robot so you do this to get the actuators online or something like that because if you are using the real robot without doing this you can actually publish anything to the servos to get everything running all right with that done the second thing you have to do is to get the joint trajectory action server up and running so same thing again same thing like we did last week remember this is just a bridge between the custom controllers that soya robot has and then uh, move it when move it makes plans and then sends them out this one can take it and then give it to the soya robot so just do that hit enter and with your server running in fact let me hide this because we will be needing it no more and then i'm going to launch my package with a demo.launch in fact throughout this session that's what we're going to be using soya underscore move it and in my case underscore two because this is the second time i'm doing it demo dot launch hit enter and then hopefully if there are no errors everything should work go to the tools drop down to bring up the graphical interface so that we'll see what is going on okay login all right so the window is a bit um let's say off screen just use this command over here if you are using the ROS development studio to recenter it so i'm going to hit enter and there i have it and i'm not sure i'll be needing this anymore but let's just leave it there for the time being so i'm going to double click to make it full screen let me hide that because we don't need it so this is just it for the first objective to bring you up to speed on what you have to change to get your package running and then 
I mean, in sync with what we've been doing so far. So objective number two, and then the main objective for this week's session is to show you how to do planning programmatically. And for this, we'll be using C++. Yes, we're using the C++ interface to move it. This one right here, the move group C++ interface. That's what we're going to be using. So what do we know so far? The main and central node for move it, the move group node. Yes, we connected our joint states topic and then the TF, they are published to it. And then we have the joint trajectory action. This is the topic that move it uses to send plans to our robot. And then, I mean, it's a two way, it's a bi-directional thing. And then today we're going to use the move group interface. Actually, there's also the move it commander for Python, which is pretty easy to use. So if you do understand how to use the move group interface for C++, I mean, you should take Python really easy. And then so far we've been using the GUI for the um, for RVs. So yeah, I'm sure you're, you're familiar with all this. And then we may also look at adding collision objects into the planning scene not actually into the robot environment but then into the planning scene so that the planning scene can take the objects in its work cell into consideration when making plans for the robot okay so without much ado let's get started so the first thing we're going to do today is create a new package inside the catkin workspace so uh we're going to name this package planning yeah simple as that so first thing is to change directory into the catkin workspace source folder and then let's create a package so catkin create underscore pkg package i'm going to call it planning and then it has a raw cpp dependency yep and just that and we're done okay so um the rest is to create the various classes that we're going to be using it's not actually a huge class so let me hide this and now go inside of in fact let me close all this because we don't need them anymore actually we do need them but we're not touching them anymore okay so inside the include folder i'm going to create um the header file i'm also going to call this planning.h and then you hit enter to get it opened up all right so i'm going to paste the code inside here then we'll go through it one after the other okay so what do we have here these are just the uh, we're including the various classes um, for the move group interface the planning interface string and then vector and then also for geometry poses because that's what we're going to be using to set um where we want the robot to be in the coordinate space and then we're also including um, the classes for the collision object and then the attached collision objects which is a requirement if you want to add objects into the planning scene yeah all right so we define the name we define the namespace my planning and then the class is my planning class yes i know this is not very creative but that's as much as I can do for today. All right, so we have a few variables over here. The planning group, which we set to right arm. Um, remember when we created a package in week two, when we created a group. I hope everybody remembers that part where we created a group and then named it right arm and then we created another one and then named it right gripper. Yes. So we want to be using the right arm group for the planning. So we just create that and we make it a constant because we're not changing it. And yeah, it's going to stay that way throughout. All right, then we create an instance of the move group interface and then the planning scene interface, which I tend to name virtual world. I mean, it helps me when I'm programming. Anytime I see this, I know that this is not uh, the actual scene of the robot but then what move it uses when it's planning and then the joint model group we create an instance of that in fact a pointer instance of that and then we create an instance of the uh, move group interface plan because 
uh, we'll see how to use this further down all right so for a private variable also we have target pose one which we initialize to this values over here in fact these are just random values that i came up with you can use anything you want because um we want to set the end effector to these coordinates when we start running the functions to actually do this and also we have move group dot allow replanning yes when you do this um if um let's say the planner fails to find a plan it's actually tries to um, do the whole process over again and then I've set the number of planning attempts to 10 so <clears throat> that's just it okay so we have a bunch of methods here that we'll be using we have the go to pose goal the go to joint state Cartesian path reset values add objects make box remove objects yes yes what are all these about okay so it's simple in order to um, make plans programmatically there are actually three main ways that you can do it and that is and each one of them is highlighted in the first three methods that we have here they go to pose go go to joint state and then Cartesian path method and then um, these are just custom methods that I created reset values yeah so that we can reset everything to a particular state we look at that it's not anything complicated and then we have um, another method here make box which takes a string and then a pose array okay um, we're just using this to add in objects into the planning scene so that we can effect um, some changes when moving is actually making a plan to achieve a certain goal for us and then we have remove object add object adding an object to the scene and then remove objects take it out just like that okay so that's it for the header file you save and then let's go straight on into the source folder and let's create the planning.cpp so planning.cpp enter hit enter again to open the file up and then i'm going to copy and paste my code over here so that we can go through that also module after module okay so that's it we define our classes inside here and what are we doing okay so remember we have three main methods that we are focusing on we have the go to pose goal the go to joint state and then cartesian path okay so um the first thing we're doing here is with the move group instance that we created remember we have that down here yes an instance of the move group interface yeah so with that we're using the set post target so if you go to the um, documentation for the move group class you see that there are a bunch of fancy functions that you can use i mean there are a whole lot of other stuff so i'm going to attach a link to this and then you can come here and then do i mean go through the uh, methods one after the other I mean pick out which ones work for whatever functionality you want to implement and then you just use it so there are so many of them you know set post target and that's what we're using today okay so that's just that for the first case you just use a set post target function then you pass in a pose so remember you have to remember we created the target underscore pose one inside of our header class yes and then we also instantiated it to really random parameters so you just do that and then in order to um, start your plan and this is what you do you call the move group dot plan and then you actually pass in an instance of um, the planning class so that's what we're doing here and then we just comparing so if the result it actually returns let's say boolean or some sort of status so here we're just comparing it if the error code that it returned the status code that it returned is is successful if it's equal to that and then if that's that then we said we're setting the boolean success variable to I mean it'll return true if everything worked out if not then we just throwing a runtime error that no plan was found okay so in order to actually start um doing some execution remember when we used arvis 
interface the last time you we did a plan and then later we clicked on execute all right so in order, in order to actually do execution this is the line that does as far as right here move group dot move and remember this is a blocking function so when you run this um your the code is going to stay here until move it is completed you know reaching its goal so that's it for the go to post goal um the other two functions actually following well they just make a few differences but then they follow in the same exact suit so let's take a look at the go to join state so go to join state what are we doing is quite a different function from the first one uh, method sorry i'm using function function i hope you understand so it's just a different method from the um go to post goal because here what we want to do is we get the actual position values or velocity values whatever you want to call it whatever you are using if you're using the velocity controller so we, are, we get the actual position of the joint and then with this you can actually change a particular um variable or a particular joint if you know they are you know we have six joints in the arm currently um is it six or seven yeah seven yeah zero two yeah so we have seven joints so you can actually change a particular one that you want so how do we do that first you you, you create an instance of the robot state and we're going to call that the current state over here and then we're still using the move group instance that we have and then we call in the get current method all right then what we're going to do is what using the current state we're going to get a joint model group and then we pass in the specific group that we want to get for the joint model remember we created a joint model group earlier as a variable where is it should be down here yes okay so now that you have that using the joint model group that's why we're going to what copy is it let's say yeah it's copy because the function here is join copy join group positions so we're using that and then we're copying the positions into this joint positions which is actually a vector it's a type a, a double yeah a vector of type double so we just copy in this specific group's position into that vector when you do that now you can modify and change whatever joint that you want to change so you can do something like joint underscore positions and let's say um i want to change the third oh is it the third yeah let me see yeah the fourth okay so let's say i want to change the fourth joint inside here i can do something like um come on guess a value guess a value um 0.7 who knows I've not actually tried this out yet so yeah so you can change specific joint positions and then once you're done with that you call the move group dot set joint value target so like I mentioned earlier there are a bunch of functions that you can use inside here and this is a group that we're using now setting a joint value target so we just giving it an array of joints in this case a vector and then it's just going to make sure to you know move everything to match what we have and then after that we do the same thing that we've been doing so far yes we call the move group dot plan using our planning instance and then we compare to see that it returns successfully if not we throw an a runtime error and then if yes we actually move the robot arm using the move group dot move so that's it for the second way of doing things yes and then the third and actually the final method that we have here is the cartesian path way of doing things so this the only difference um, f um the only thing this method implements differently from the other two is you actually get to pass in a set of waypoints so let's say move and and According to the documentation, this is actually a, recommenda a recommendation if and when the end effector is approaching a particular target, this is what you have to use. So, I mean, if you wanted to move up a certain um, value, move down, 
move sideways you know those set of waypoints that you want the end effector to um, effect so what are we doing um, we created um, a vector of type the geometry messages pose and we call it waypoints all right so first thing we push in the first pose that we have we call this target pose one and then we created another pose we changed a few um, of the variables in it and then we push it into the vector we did the same thing again over here and then we push it also into our vector then yeah so you get the gist everything you just it's, it, you just have to create a vector of poses and then once you are done yeah you just pass it over to the move using the move group instance but yes there's also this function here set max velocity scaling factor okay so this right here what this does is it's not the actual speed of the robot uh, according to the documentation it's like you're setting you're telling um move it to use let's say a percentage yes I, I actually like to think of this as a percentage of the actual speed of the um, the joints so 0 0.1 is like 10 percent so move at a 10 percent speed yeah that's how i actually like to understand if you set this to one you'll be moving at the full speed that the joints are actually allowed to move so now that we've done that what we're going to do is you create an instance of the robot trajectory and then there are a few other variables that we have here. we have the jump threshold and then end effector step um, if you look inside the documentation for the method i mean for the move group class the compute cartesian path so what are these end effector step and then the jump threshold so end effector step says is the meters between an end effector configuration of consecutive points in the result trajectory that's like um, the resolution at which you want to move actually if you go to the um, move it documentation also it mentions it says that uh, we want the Cartesian path to be interpolated at a resolution of one centimeter which is why we specify a 0 0.01 max step in the Cartesian translation yes I hope you make sense out of that and then we have the jump threshold it's actually the number of jump up uh, let's say the threshold at which you want the IK the inverse kinematic to be allowed to jump when planning so if you set it to zero you are actually disabling it so it cannot jump any points and then it has to map out everything exactly as it is so let me see if there is anything written about that inside here it says no more than jump threshold is um points allowed in the result it says is allowed as in changing distance in the configuration space of the robot yeah so that's just it changing distance in the configuration space of the robot so um yeah with that then we call the move group that compute cartesian path and then we pass it the waypoints that we created the end effector step that we want to use the jump threshold and then you can actually pass and then also the trajectory so it actually stores the trajectory inside here that's why we created an instance of the trajectory class but then we're not using it but then imagine you can use this for visualization to see what plan move it intends to use but we're not doing visualization in this session after that remember to call move group move this method also returns um a double so this double is actually how do i put it a fraction let's say it shows the percentage of the path that was followed so it's between zero and one and then it will tell you how much of the path that was followed so imagine you call this method when the robot is already in this pose i mean it has already executed everything and then it's in the final pose that the end effector is supposed to be in it will return a zero for you because it actually didn't do anything yes so that's just it over here so that's it for the three main uh, methods that we want to look at for making plans and move it and then we have this other let's say utility methods that i created it's just reset values we're just using it anytime you call it it says the current state that we're robotting to be the start state and then we also set in the um, velocity scaling factor remember this is 
that thing that the method that you use to tell move it the percentage at which it should operate the joint the speed percentage yeah and then we also have a make box method over here it's just for adding in objects into the planning scene so that we can effect some changes in the plans so to do this first you create a collision object uh, we're calling it box then we set the frame id so that we know relative to what frame we're going to be setting the poses for this particular box that we're creating so to get a frame also we use the move group instance dot get planning frame and then we set the name for the um object that we are creating so the object id we set it to whatever name this is a string yes of type string yeah all right so with that done now we create the actual primitive which is from the shapes underscore message messages package that's a solid primitive and then we're creating specific type we want a box you can create a cylinder a sphere i think so in this case we're creating a box and then we're setting the dimensions for the box over here after that yes we create an actual pose um instance now the geometry pose we set it like we've been doing so far and then with that done this way we're going to be pushing everything that we've created into the collision object um instance so this is quite long but then that's how it is i mean that's how everything goes so you create an instance of the collision object itself just one instance you set the various parameters for it that's the header frame the box id the primitive the specific primitive that you want to use for it and then the pose and then you also set the operation type which is box.add and then after you've done that you just create a vector of the same type and then you add whatever you created the first um collision object that you created into it so we tend to call this collision objects i mean plural so you can add in more than one primitive at a time and once you're done you go ahead to add you know call the add collision objects and then pass it the collision objects um instance that you created here to actually add it into the planning scene in this case the virtual world yes um so you notice we have this um ross duration dot sleep we're sleeping for two seconds over here and why are we doing this um i realized that when i was um preparing for this class um this session what happened was anytime you call this function this method <laughs> sorry without calling the without sleeping for some time the objects tend not to appear in the planning scene i'm not entirely um, sure why that is happening but that's what you have to do so you just call the sleep when you sleep for two seconds here before calling the add collision objects they tend to appear but i'm not really sure if there's the same thing in python uh, i've not tried that one yet but then this is how you have to do it so that's it for the make box method and then the add objects is just calling the make box two times and then passing in a few um poses and then a different name for each um collision object that you want to add so we just call in the make box two times inside the add objects and then to remove an object from the scene all you have to do is create um a vector of type string and then pass in i mean push all the the name for all the objects that you want to remove so in this case block one block two and then you just call the remove collision objects method on the virtual world instance that we created and then passing the vector that you've created so uh, actually removing is quite easier than creating with that done let's create um a main method um yeah to run all these things for us so go to the source folder again and then this time i'm going to call it run.cpp yeah yes i know my disk is almost full close okay so what are we doing here here we just check in we start a node yes oh this here is just raw stuff that we've been doing we just started node we create a node handle object and then we get a spinner running okay so we check if the um argument command line argument is not equal to two if not then we pr we print out all these messages telling you that hey this is how you have to use it 
um, you actually have to attach something to the some sort of argument well so if the arguments were passed to it then what are we doing here we, we're creating an instance of our planning class then we are using a switch to check what did we pass to it so on every run we do we do reset the whole interface you know the reset is just setting the specific classes um let's say the specific state as the start state for the robot and then also the velocity we're bringing it up to 100 percent so we're checking if we passed one to it we're going to be calling the pose go method if we pass two we're going to be calling the go to join state three cartesian path and then it goes on so four is for the add objects method and then five is for remove objects so control s to save and then we can get going okay to finish up with um, this package let's go to the cmix list and then make some few changes that we have to do so first we're going to do the uncomment this part add definitions then we're also going to tell it to find the um, move it ross planning interface so you add this over here into the find package then let's see what else we have to change inside the cmake list okay so far so good yes so you also on comment include directories and then cutkin dependencies yes we have done that and then finally we're going to um add in the executable that we want to create and then we set the target libraries okay so we want to call the executable run and then we wanted to actually compile this class for us so we are compiling the run.cpp and then the planning.cpp which also depends on the planning.h so we plan we're compiling all three over here and then yeah so we'll be calling the executable run so anytime we want to use it we'll just be doing something like rush run planning run and then we pass it a specific argument one two three four or five also in the include directory section of the cmake um list let's add the include folder over here so that when catkin goes to compile our files it knows where to find the header files so you do this remember to hit ctrl s to save and then let's build the project so i'm going to run catkin make and let's continue when it finishes building so now that the build has finished successfully yes you should have something like this let's go ahead and then let me do rust pack to actually update um how do i put it to update ross terminal interface on the new packages that we have so you can do rust pack profile and then now we can use a um, code completion in the terminal so in order to test this out let's go ahead and then do rush run um, planning hopefully and then yes remember we call the executable run so now let's pass in an argument in this case I'm passing in the way to try out the Cartesian path method I hope you remember that one so I hit enter and there it goes yes visualization yes it did the plan for us and then it's just moving the whole thing to map the <clears throat> the waypoints that we set for it so you see that it also followed um almost a hundred percent here we have a 0 0.928571 you can try with say um let's try with one and it did that for us remember the one refers to the go to pose method yes go to pose goal method and yes it went to that pose goal for us yes so you can do that and then you can do two for the second one let me bring my terminal up so that you can see everything very well okay so let's now also add in some objects into the collision interface remember four will do that for us so i'm going to hit four enter and then added block one added block two let's check yes so let me make this bigger 
you can see that now we have in here two um, blocks in the interface so anytime move it is going to make another plan it's going to actually take these collision blocks into consideration so that the arm doesn't collide with any of the boxes in fact so that's it for if you want to remove this you just have to run the remove objects which in this case is what the run number five you just do that and then it can remove it for you that's it for this week's session on um, doing planning programmatically with move it interfacing with your move it um, move grouping a node programmatically so i hope you learned something from this remember we looked at three methods or three ways that you can do this use first certain a pose specific pose for the end effector and then you call the set pose or set pose target and then second way of doing this is so actually using the joint position so you can get all the joint positions for the specific robot under consideration and then you change a particular um joint and then yes that's one way of doing it and then there's also the cartesian path way of doing this you pass in um a variety of waypoints and then move it actually make sure it guides the end effector through all these waypoints for you we can also set the um speed percentage speed at which we want the joints to operate and you can add in collision blocks into the interface and also remove them so that move uh when move it goes to do planning it actually takes these objects into consideration so i hope you learned something today see you next week when we'll be looking at using the um point clouds yes for planning and all that so that move it is actually updated um currently of the robot environment you see what we're doing here right now move it doesn't know anything of the um gazebo environment in this case so if we should add in a block over here move it has no idea that this block is over there and then the arm is going to collide into it if we should plan anything for it. so for next week's class we're going to be looking at how to use point clouds that actually publish the current um work cell of the robot to move it so that move it can also take that one into consideration so using point clouds we don't necessarily need to add in collision objects here you can be you can add in anything you want either in the actual workspace of the robot or in this case in the simulation workspace and then move it will do well to add take that into consideration so see you next weekend bye